Welcome back to Biographics. I'm your host, cosmic horror madman Eric Malachite, and today's bite-sized bio was written by the ever-capable Arnaldo Teodrani. With that said, let's get into it, shall we? In the mid-1920s, he became one of the most successful European black boxers, boasting incredible winning streaks against world-class champions. His story was the epitome of the underdog success narrative, as he rose from a vagabond life to the limelight. In different circumstances, he may have been remembered as one of the greatest middleweight champions, but the spiteful propaganda of a totalitarian regime quietly consigned him to oblivion. This is the story of Leone Iacovacci, the black boxer who challenged fascist Italy. Leone Iacovacci was born on April 19, 1902 in Sansa Pombo, modern-day Angola, once Belgian Congo. His mother was Zibu Mabeta, the daughter of a leader of the Babuendi people. But his name, meaning lion, came from his father, Umberto Iacovacci, an Italian agronomist working in Congo. Umberto and Zibu were not married but Umberto recognized Leone as his own, thus granting him citizenship. In 1905, Umberto had to return to Rome, and he brought along his lion cub, who was taken care of by his grandparents. The toddler developed a loving relationship with his grandmother, who took note of the simmering prejudice directed at him. To shelter him from discrimination, Leone's grandparents relocated to a quieter environment, the town of Viterbo, north of Rome. In 1909, Leone suffered a sucker punch, if you will, when his beloved grandma died. This was followed by an uppercut to the gut when he was shipped back to Rome to an aunt, who promptly dropped him at a Catholic boarding school. Leone absolutely detested school. He escaped several times until, at age 16, he decided to leave for good. He boarded a train to Taranto, a port city on the heel of the Italian boot. There, Leone adopted the persona of an 18-year-old traveler from Calcutta who had lost his papers. As such, he pestered the British consul until he was enlisted on a British ship as a sailor. The steamer was heading back to England, carrying promises of a new life, but life wasn't done clocking Leone in the face. Before the vessel could even reach the coast, it sank! Luckily, Leone and other passengers were picked up by another ship, and he made it unscathed to London. Somehow, before mid-1918, Leone had mastered the English language and obtained a British passport, bearing his third incarnation thus far, John Douglas Walker. Mr. Walker became Private Walker when he enrolled with the Bedfordshire Regiment. The Great War was still on, and in August 1918, Leone's regiment was shipped to Vladivostok, Siberia to take part in the Russian Civil War. After fighting against the Bolshevik army, Private Walker returned to England and was demobbed. He spent most of 1919 jobless and penniless until one fateful November night in London. As he walked down a street, a man approached him and asked, Hey son, you know how to box? Or presumably, Hey son, you know how to box? This strange man was a circus manager who organized the match between an African-American boxer and a local fighter, but the American had bailed on him, and the manager needed another dark-skinned brawler to step in. Leone accepted the offer, got in the ring, and despite having no experience, he knocked the shit out of his opponent. It was time to punch back at life. You got knocked the out. The young African-Italian had discovered his true talent, punching people for money. Yeah! And he was damn good at it. He assumed his fourth persona, African-American boxer Jack Walker from Pittsburgh, and went on to win eight out of nine bouts in 1920. After two victories in early 1921, Leone realized that English promoters relegated black boxers to minor competitions. Thus, in March, he moved to France, where pugilists of color could join high-level tournaments. In Paris, Leone was in his element. Fighting in the middleweight category, he wiped the floor with his opponents, earning a good amount of cash and becoming something of a celebrity. The Italian Stallion for Rocky! He attracted the attention of Italian boxing promoters who invited him to Milan on April 22nd, 1922 to challenge the Italian middleweight champion Bruno Frattini. After the 11th round, something strange happened. The boxer known as Jack Walker shouted to his cornerman for some water, but he did so in Italian, more precisely, in Roman dialect. Leone lost the bout, and his mask started to slip. Surprisingly, he maintained the ruse long enough to return to Paris, where he continued to box for another three years. 
At the end of 1924, Leone returned to Italy and staged a reveal for his true identity. Forget Jack Walker. My name is Leone Iacovacci, and I'm from Rome. Leone became an immediate sensation with Roman audiences, who loved him for his prowess, aggressive stance, and creative use of Roman vernacular in trash talk. Romans saw him as their local champion against the traditional supremacy of boxers from Milan. But Mussolini's fascist regime, installed in October 1922, saw him with suspicion. Italian fascism did not have a racial ideology at its inception. Nonetheless, fascism was a nationalist movement that favored the endeavors of quote-unquote pure-blooded Italians. Moreover, Italy was ramping up its colonial ambitions in Libya and East Africa. Fittingly, fascist propaganda depicted white Italians as a civilizing force for the good of, and I quote, savage black Africans. Yikes. When Leone returned to Italy, he tried to have his Italian citizenship recognized. This was his only hope to officially challenge championship title holders. Unfortunately, he had served with the British Army, thus effectively renouncing Italian citizenship. Moreover, the regime actively stalled him, unleashing a dictatorship's most feared weapon after violence, bureaucracy. As he sparred against red tape, Leone continued to down opponents in the ring. From February 1926 to October 1927, he defeated 20 opponents in a row, including French Marcel Thiel, later a world middleweight champion. On October 16th, 1927, Leone squared off against the Italian middleweight champion, Milanese fighter Mario the Bull Bosicio. It was the perfect setup for the regime's propaganda machine. In one corner, we had the paragon of Italic Virtue, a white boxer who combined athletic power with technique and strategy. In the other corner, some black guy who relied on pure brute force and claimed to be Italian. The audience saw it differently, though. It was just a duel of Rome versus Milan. Who cared if the Roman boxer happened to be black? The bull charged at the lion, and the lion knocked him out three times in a row. The bull got back to his feet, and the lion fought him for an entire 15 rounds. Eventually, the judges declared a draw. Boxing enthusiasts loudly disagreed, though. Leone had clearly won the bout on points. Eventually, Leone did score a win on another front. In June 1928, he finally got his Italian citizenship. According to boxing rules at the time, this allowed him to challenge another Italian boxer in an international competition. The lion had the perfect prey in mind, Bull Bosicio, who had recently been crowned European middleweight champion. The two rivals touched gloves again on June 24th, 1928, and this match was truly a big deal. It took place in Rome's largest stadium, filled with 40,000 spectators. Special trains were chartered to carry enthusiasts from all over Italy, while stalls were bursting with VIPs such as Mussolini's daughter, Ida. The bull and the lion slugged it out for 15 rounds, and eventually the judges awarded the victory on points to Iacovacci. Leone had conquered both the Italian and European middleweight titles. This caused embarrassment for fascist authorities. They could not strip him of the title nor avoid news stories about the match. Nonetheless, the Duce's propaganda machine doctored photos and footage of the event, removing the moment when Leone was declared a victor. The recording of the radio commentary was mysteriously lost as well. As early as two days after the event, headlines about Leone's victory completely disappeared, replaced by racist articles claiming that Iacovacci was, and I quote, too black to represent Italy in interest international competitions. Bull Bosicio piled on, declaring in several interviews that the match had been fixed and Leone was a fraud. What should have been the pinnacle for Leone was the beginning of his downfall. The ostracism meted on him by authorities was matched by a declining record in the ring. On March 27, 1929, Leone squared off against an old rival, Marcel Thiel. This time he lost the bout, ceding his European middleweight title. Sometime after this match, Leone suffered a debilitating injury in the ring, a detached retina. Leone decided to keep the injury hidden and continued to box. On August 7th, 1930, the Lion faced once again his nemesis, Bull Bosicio. The Milanese challenger defeated Iacovacci on points after 15 rounds, thus reclaiming his status as Italian champion. From 1931 to 1934, Leone fought 15 matches, winning only seven. His professional boxing career came to a close on July 6th, 1935, when he was defeated by Romanian Matsi Speko. 
Throughout his career, Leone had fought 152 professional boxing bouts. He had won 97, 44 of which by KO. He had lost 38, mostly on points. 16 matches ended in a draw, and one was decreed as a no contest. In November 1938, Mussolini enacted the infamous racial laws. Life became nearly unbearable for non-white, non-Catholic residents of the country. So, Leone decided to return to France. Once in Paris, Leone met and fell in love with a Jewish girl, Berthe Samon. The two welcomed the birth of their daughter, Nicole, and enjoyed a couple of quiet years. Just a couple, though. As in June 1940, German armored divisions invaded France. Yakovacci tried to reclaim his British identity and enlist in the British Army to fight against the Nazis. He sent a letter to an enlistment officer in London, but by the time he got a reply, France had capitulated and the British expeditionary force had left the continent. Bert, Nicole, and Lyonne were now stuck in a Nazi-occupied country. The young family, however, managed to avoid internment, taking a Leaf from her name-changing husband, Bert changed her surname to Roquette, thus avoiding being identified as Jewish. After the liberation of Paris in August 1944, Yakovacci was able to re-enlist in the British Army in a service unit. Lyonnais was deployed back to his homeland, where he served up to and after the liberation of Italy, April 25, 1945. Working for the newly formed United Nations, he was in charge of providing aid to displaced refugees. In the ensuing decades, he continued to live in Italy, mostly in Milan. Despite his age and detached retina, he did not abandon contact sports, taking up wrestling, becoming Italian champion in 1952 and 1953. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, Leone flirted with the booming Italian film industry, taking minor acting roles. When wrestling and acting opportunities dried out, Leone coached young fighters and worked as a cornerman and promoter for American boxers. Eventually, the man who had once been the most successful black European middleweight had to take a job as a doorman and janitor at a block of flats in Milan. As the calendar flipped to 1974, Leone Iacovacci faced a new adversary, more persistent than Bull Bosicio, his own heart. The only muscle to ever let him down, his heart, went into cardiac arrest seven times over the span of nine years. Every time he was knocked out, the lion stood up. But on November 16th, 1983, an eighth heart attack floored him once too many. We wonder if, in his last moments, he could hear the ref counting up to ten. Throughout his life, Lyonnais had won and lost. After his death, he risked total defeat against yet another nemesis, Oblivion. Fortunately, his story was plucked from societal amnesia by author Moreau Valire, whose 2008 book Nero di Roma inspired a 2017 documentary, The Duce's Boxer, directed by Tony Sacucci. Thank you for watching till the end and helping us preserve the memory of this remarkable sportsman. Please let us know if you would like to hear more boxing stories and if you like this shorter bio format. We will be back with more bite-sized bios just like this. And if you dug this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and keep it tuned here to Biographics for more videos just like this. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.